Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, I I did. I definitely did. It was very quiet, you know, saving money, all that good stuff. <laughs> Staying indoors. Staying indoors is probably the wisest choice uh, these days. Seems like whenever we walk outside, it's like instantly you're spending money. And it's just like, okay, <laughs> okay. I know what I have to do. I just have to stay right here. Stay right here. But uh, I hope you had a good start to your week, um, whether you're in school, whether you're working, whatever. Uh, I hope it was a good one. We are launching into another wonderful week of reactions. These are all member requested videos. My name is Todd. I should probably say that first. <laughs> my name is Todd. Welcome to my reaction channel. I've been working on this for about oh, three, over three years at this point, three and a half years. Uh, I think we're turning four years old. <laughs> We're turning four years old in March. So, uh, yeah, it's been been a little minute. <laughs> um, recently, we started doing these live streams. I think we're like 85 live streams in twice a week. Um, I think it's gone well. I enjoy it. I like the fact that I get to interact. It's less isolating, I guess you could say. Um, certainly with the original videos, it was very... You know, I'm literally just looking at the camera. There's no feedback. <laughs> I'm just, you know, trying to keep it going and then making mistakes and having to edit that out. And ugh, I just, I'd rather do it live and mistakes happen. It just is what it is. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're all not perfect. <laughs> but we are pretty amazing because we all come here for the same reason. We're interested in seeing content maybe we're not familiar with. Maybe it's content we are familiar with and we want to see more of it. It's just fascinating stuff. Um, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> the the um, roller coaster of emotions and content from like angry videos to like sad videos to funny videos to cute videos to flirting videos to comedy videos. It's just everywhere in between we've uh, we've experienced and reacted to. So it's been interesting. Not me forgetting what I even ate for breakfast today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on, Andy? Welcome in. Welcome in. So the video rundown for today, we got Miss Fisher's murder mystery. That's what we're going to start with. Uh, and then we go to Enigma. And then we're on to a Sailor Moon video. And then we're going to do a Given, which is an anime video. Uh, and then we'll end today with Tay Tawan, I think it is. Uh, it's another pairing that uh, we'll be able to see and kind of get introduced to. What's going on, Will? Welcome in, welcome in. Um, <clears throat> before we get started today, I just wanted to talk about, <laughs> or actually, you know what, let's do this first. If you'd like to request your own videos, you know, you heard something, maybe it jogs something in your memory and you're just like, oh, it'd be interesting to see him react to this, or, you know, I'd really love to see this on stream or whatever. You can go ahead and do so at toddreacts.com. The season and series tiers is how you do so. Uh, and then you will basically connect your Discord. You need a Discord account. Or you can just send me a message via the website. Whichever one's easier, I suppose. Um, ideally, it would be Discord. That way, they're all in the same place. And it's just easier to keep track of, frankly. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you would like to request your own, go ahead and do so. Basically, you'll just connect your Discord to the website which is super cool. You go to the perks section, I think it is, and then you just connect it to the website. And then that lets you join the uh, Discord. It also assigns you a role. So whatever you sign up for, whether it's season or series, it will assign you that role automatically. And then you will see the little hidden channels where we request our videos. So if you're a public person or just a uh, normal person that just joined the Discord, you don't see those channels. There are hidden channels available to uh, members, but uh, just letting you in a little inside baseball there. But uh, yeah, it's been interesting. It's worked out well, I think. Um, I had no experience with Discord heading into this, so it was just very much like a learning curve. So there is a little bit of a learning curve, but I think you'll figure it out, as did I. And shout out, speaking of which, to Andy in the chat, who boosted the Discord. Um, awesome stuff. That basically means that the little logo for the Discord server is now able to be animated, which is cool because I put this little, wait, there it is. Put this little animated logo in there. It just spins around. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat. So shout out to Andy for that. 
Um, and while you're there, go ahead and check out <laughs> what have I had on the accessories from last time. Go ahead and check out the winter collection of merch available right now. I am literally wearing this hooded long sleeve tee in this color. As you can see, super soft. I enjoy it tremendously. <laughs> As I say on here, which I said on stream, this is so soft you could sleep in it. I literally put that quote on there because I'm like, you know what? This is accurate. <laughs> this is the most accurate thing I can think of to, uh, to describe it. So lots of sizes, very inclusive sizing. If you're ever wondering about, you know, what exactly is the XL, 2XL? Because it does differ based on who's manufacturing it and whatnot. Just click on the size guide. You can bring it up there. You got inches. You got centimeters. You can figure it out from there. I believe in you. <laughs> also, I just want to bring everybody's attention to this because I think it's important. And it's a nice thing to have. Quality is guaranteed. If there is a print error or visible quality issue, we'll replace it or refund it. Um, because the products are made to order, we don't accept general returns or sizing related returns. But if there's a print error or it's visually, you know, a quality issue, it'll be replaced or refunded. Your choice. And um, if you need to contact customer support at all, just come down to the bottom of the page, hit the contact link on the left, uh, and then you would just send an email to this contact at support.toddreacts.com. That gets you involved with uh, customer support and they will take care of you. So just a heads up on that. I don't probably go over that enough, so it makes sense to do it every once in a while. And also check out the accessories. This is the rocks glass. This is not <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> this is an energy drink. I don't know why they made it this color uh, because the flavor is white peach. What about this is giving white peach? <laughs> it looks like Mountain Dew, honestly. It looks radioactive. I don't know why they decided to go with that color. It makes no sense. But... Uh, and then this is the insulated tumbler. You've seen it. You've seen it a thousand times at this point, every stream. Uh, the phone case, currently on the phone. You can check it out. I picked out the glossy. Uh, there is glossy or there is matte. So whichever finish you want, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Obviously, this is for iPhone. It has a bunch of them. Uh, it does have the 16s, the Pro, the Max, et cetera, Pro Max, the Max Pro, the... Mini Max Pro Max Mini Plus. <laughs> um, it does have that, so I will be adding that soon. Uh, I should make that available after stream. I'll look into that, make sure it's available for you all. The water bottle is literally getting ready to go to work. Um, this one, it's literally getting ready to go to work. So I don't have that to show off. The pint glass, which you'll see me use on Fridays for a little... A little um, fizzy beverage, we'll say, uh, <laughs> is right back there, but it's so blurry you can't see it. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and check it out. Members save 15% on every order automatically. You don't have to do anything. Um, you just add it to the cart, and there you go. It takes 15% off. Looks like an energy drink. It does, and it is, but it also looks gross. <laughs> Head on over to the YouTube channel if you're not there already. Let's go ahead and refresh that. I think I have a newer video on there. I do. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. It's this big button right here. Let me go ahead and make the mouse super huge because you can see it. <laughs> it's this, you know what? Let me zoom in. It's that big button right there. <laughs> go ahead and hit that, please. Uh, if you haven't already. Uh, I appreciate it. We're just over 13,000 subscribers, which is super cool. I'm glad you're here uh, and you've joined. Um, it's awesome. It's it's just kind of lends a little bit of, I don't know. Gosh, what am I what am I thinking of when I'm trying to think of this? It's like it lends the channel a little bit of gravitas, if you will. Just having that number increased. It doesn't mean anything monetarily to me at all. Uh, it literally just means, you know, people might check out the channel more. The fact that it has more subscribers, it just is what it is. 
Uh, and I think when you reach 100,000, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it's less than that, actually, they give you a little check mark next to the channel, which is just another way of like verifying and whatnot. So it adds a little bit of uh, gravitas, if you will. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Again, it is right there. <laughs> That zoom in is hilarious. I love it. Um, <laughs> and if you're looking for a playlist of videos, you can hit the playlist. And there is a ton, literally a ton of playlists I've created over the years. So go ahead and check those out. Uh, and if you're looking to search, you can just hit this little magnifying glass and type in whatever you want to type in. And hopefully it's available. Because, I mean, I've got over a thousand videos on there. Chances are I've reacted to something even remotely close to what you're looking for. So check it out today. I appreciate it. If you're on Twitch and you're following along with me live, go ahead and hit the follow button. And uh, let's go ahead and bring up the Discord as well. I almost always forget about it, which is weird. <laughs> there it is. There it is in all its glory. As you can see at the top, uh, it does give you a link to the Twitch. Whenever I'm live, this little happening now thing comes up. Super awesome. Uh, and you can just join live. It'll bring up the app. It'll bring up, you know, whatever. However you want to do it via the browser or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, it's a nice, easy way to know when I'm live. And I do update that based on, you know, if I'm going to be live, if I'm changing the date, etc., and also, I do post about that in the channel, which is updates from Todd, myself. We got the general lobby. We have a request a channel channel. Uh, that's where you can request anything to have a channel. If you have a fandom or something you're interested in that you don't see a channel for, just let us know, and we'll make it for you. And you can talk to other people. 170 members and counting. Wow. 170 members. Shout out to Jace. Welcome, Jace. Uh, shout out to all the mods that help with the links that you'll be seeing today. Uh, and you see it every time I stream. Uh, Jace, Luke, Rocco Kitty, all of you, I appreciate your help and assistance. It is appreciated. Uh, let's see here. And honestly, I will say this. I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak it into existence because I'm probably jinxing myself, but I will say this. We don't have to do a lot of moderation because this community is just amazing. Amazing. Super nice. Super friendly. Interested in everything and you, know, you could possibly be interested in. It's been truly amazing to experience. Um, it's been awesome, <laughs> which I shouldn't be surprised. The YouTube comments are usually pretty amazing as well. Um, there's some hit and miss every once in a while, and there's a bunch that are hidden or whatever, but it's very rare. Um, it's very rare. So I have been extremely pleased, you know, because usually you hear all these horror stories, but uh, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any. Check out these amazing, I'm just scrolling so you can just kind of check it out. All these amazing things. We got a bunch of community ones just for fun as well, where you can share food, share recipes, share pictures of food, some adventures you've been on, music you're into, your pet pictures and all that good stuff, happy and wholesome stuff, movies that you've seen. Maybe you want to review a movie, whatever. Maybe you're looking forward to a movie. Anyway, lots of great stuff going on there. Over 170 members at this point. Uh, I think it's 170 exactly, but I'm just going to say over because I'm optimistic. <laughs> I'm optimistic. We're going to get another one. I guarantee it. <laughs> that is a personal guarantee. Let's go ahead and jump into the... Or actually, before we do that, hello, everybody. Welcome in. <laughs> let's, not, let's not jump in too fast. Um, you deserve it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, so today was kind of interesting. I, uh, I took my car in for a repair. It's mostly cosmetic. It's not really like a collision or anything. Um, it's basically a plastic piece at the bottom of the front passenger side 
that got kind of pushed in. <laughs> and so this metal thing, whatever it is, maybe it's part of the frame. Maybe it's just something that like, you know, keeps it out there, punctured it. And so it's just, it looks bad, frankly. <laughs> There's no like sensors or anything or lights that got screwed up. It's very, you know, it's very, very not much a uh, collision. And the inspector was looking at it and he goes, wow, this should be easy. <laughs> he goes, all right, I'll just order the part, which is this big wrap around plastic part around the bottom. Um, she'll get it by Friday and then maybe it'll be, you know, ready to go next week. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So I got a rental car today. I walked over to the rental car thing. He's like, well, you could wait 10 minutes to get picked up and, you know, brought over there, or you could just walk and it'll take two seconds. I was like, okay, I think I'll just walk. Um, so I went to a rental car place. Rental cars are always interesting. Like it's, people treat rental cars pretty poorly <laughs> just as a general rule. Um, so you're always getting in there and you're just like looking at mysterious stains and, you know, slices out of the roof and things are missing. And what is that substance right there? Ooh, you know, there's scratches on the steering wheel. Like how, did, how is there scratches on the steering wheel? <laughs> it's just, it's very odd. You're very aware that it is used and used roughly. <laughs> and then you're looking at the vents. How many people have shared this, shared this air and oh, there's something about it that's just kind of gross. Um, but it is what it is. <laughs> so I have a rental car for I don't know how long. <laughs> probably a week. Probably a week, two weeks, something like that. Hopefully not longer than that. Um, and the insurance is covering it, which is good. Good. You know, that's why we pay for insurance, right? Unfortunately, the deductible is gigantic which is something you don't think about until you actually have to pay it. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, okay. So paying for the insurance is, is paying for the pleasure of having insurance. <laughs> gotcha. I understand now. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, that is the current state of affairs here. Um, I'm working from home. For the rest of the week, uh, because we do have a holiday on Thursday. Uh, still be streaming on Friday. I don't see any reason to move it or anything like that. Um, so that's good. Glad we moved streams to Friday. So it's not interrupted. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Certainly. Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> it's very, very true. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the first video. It is Friny. And Jack, Say You Love Me. And it is from Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Go ahead and bring that up, shall we? Let's do it. Here we go. Say you love me. If you really want a Roman soldier. You kissed me. You kissed me back. D Is that an invitation? Well, I could wait all day for yours. She just needed some company. She needed you. Jack Robinson. Jack. Eye contact is just, I mean, it's loud. <laughs> it's very loud. There's a lot going on there. 
in that wreckage. I found it unbearable. Sounds inviting. Perhaps another time. In a more intimate setting. Franny. Franny. Sounds serious. It is. I'm not sure that my kisses can be compelled by sprigs of parasitic greenery. I'll take your word for it. Hello, Jack. No, wait, wait. Please, Miss Fisher. Do what you're told just this once. And to the one as yet unsung hero. Are you all right? I believe I am. Oh my gosh, that was lovely. <laughs> that was a great way to start stream. It was beautiful. It was heartfelt. That song was lovely. Oh my gosh, that was that was really good. That was by um, Jesse Ware W A R E saying that. But it's say you love me. Go ahead and throw a like on that video. Link down below in the YouTube description. Go ahead and check it out and throw it some love yourself. Um, yeah, that was that was lovely. Wow. <laughs> Good grief. Oh my gosh. I don't know why this just jogged my memory, but I was watching 90 Day Fiance. Newsflash, I watch so many. So many <laughs> uh, 90 Day Fiance spinoffs and all that stuff. And the one that I was watching last night, um, this person was going to meet the person they've been talking to online and flying over there to a different country. Um, and to fly with them, make sure they're safe, they brought an ex. <laughs> what? Clearly, that didn't go over very well. So that kind of jogged my memory when Franny was watching him like console his ex, and I'm just like, "Oh boy, that is not <laughs> that's not going to go well." Love these two because it's such an adult romance. Two people with full and complex lives, duties, learning the fullness of each other, and falling deeper in love with every step. Never asking the other to compromise themselves. That's really lovely. Really lovely going on lots of planets welcome in welcome in um yeah gosh that is it's something it's really something like it's it's very much like they have their own space yet they're constantly in this what seems like flirting but not like openly flirting like it's just kind of a very oh gosh what's a good way to put it it's a very um subtle subtle like flirtation and it's not over the top it's not graphic it's not anything like that it's just very subtle <laughs> which i i appreciate you know 
a lot of things nowadays are pretty overt. <laughs> like scroll social media for like two seconds and you'll see it. Um, it's kind of nice to have the little reserved, you know, cat and mouse back and forth kind of thing. It's, it's charming. It's very charming. Jack Robinson is one of the main characters of the two books, as well as the television series, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries, played by an Australian actor. Age, about 30. <laughs> Somewhere around there. Could be 50, could be 40, could be 20, about 30. Uh, as a child, Jack inherited a coin collection from his Uncle Ted. He was interested enough in it that Hugh knew him as a coin collector even though he sold his collection at age 12. Very methodical, rational man who would prefer to operate within the rules. Ms. Fisher constantly challenges him and unerringly uh, delivers results through unconventional methods. Jack is reluctant to work with Ms. Fisher, but is unable to ignore the veracity of her information. He begins to allow her as a... Oh, gosh. Let's try this again. He begins to allow her as a collaborator, but still within boundaries. He has feelings for Miss Fisher, but his ex-wife, Rosie, is a complication in the situation as she still has feelings for him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, boy. Yeah, that definitely reminds me of that 90 Day Fiance episode. Oh, gosh. Why would you bring your ex to meet your potential lover? Like, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, physically, he is a man by the well-shaped body, tall and with a clear skin. What? That was such an odd description. <laughs> that was such an odd description. Well-shaped body, tall and with a, with a clear skin. Just all of the skin. <laughs> His brown hair, blue eyes, blah, blah, blah. Fluent in German, but lacks confidence in his French. That was bizarre, wasn't it? it? I felt like we went into like fan fiction kind of realm real quick there. Talented, capable, by the book detective with a calm and practical disposition, rarely loses his composure or displays emotional outbursts, a foil to the more passionate Miss Fisher. As a detective, he sees himself as a servant of the law, and that is the duty and obligation to follow it, impartiality to wherever or whoever it leads to, regardless of personal feelings or possible retaliation from those in power. In Queens of Flowers, he arrests the mayor without hesitation after his predatory, uh, ooh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to avoid that sentence, uh, Doing bad things, very bad things, to uh, young folks is brought to light. Boy, came up into that sentence, and I'm like, oh boy, get out of here. Abort, abort. <laughs> Often allowing or even encouraging Phryne to pursue leads in less than legal matters, knowing that she has the flexibility to find information in a less conventional manner than he does not. Right. Okay, I see. So Phryne's the, uh, the one that goes outside the law, outside the bounds, you know, that kind of thing. Gives Phryne incriminating pictures of what? Wait, what? What is this? <laughs> Phryne incriminating pictures of two homosexuals to destroy, since as a servant of the law, he cannot. What is going on? <laughs> Jack's outwardly stern and conservative appearance hides an open-minded, accepting, and even humorous personality. Uh, da -da. His main reason for dismissing Phryne early on is based less on her being a woman and more because she is reckless, impulsive, private citizen with no training, who would likely comprom compromise an investigation or get herself hurt. Uh, Phryne and Jack share a mutual respect for each other. Polar opposites tend to bring out the best in each other when solving crimes. Jack's stable. Obviously, uh, practical nature brings Miss Fisher back down to earth, so to speak. <laughs> Probably means no acne. It's still a weird thing to say. Yeah, very weird. <laughs> um, Friday's friends at the time, it was illegal... To be gay. This was him protecting Friday's gay friends by oh gotcha. Okay, that makes way more sense. 
Um, that caught me off guard. I was just like, wait, what? Uh, recognizes Jack recognizes that Phryne is a capable detective and valuable resource, holding a large amount of trust and respect for her. If she tells Jack something is amiss, he will take her word for it. He has a solid friendship with her, often joining her for a drink, dinner, or chat. Or something else, you know what I mean? Uh, Phryne and Jack's will-they-won't-they they relationship is a key part of the series. They frequently engage in witty, flirtatious banter, seemingly acknowledging that while they share an attraction, they have no desire to engage in anything more. However, as the series continues, it becomes clear that their attraction and feelings become much deeper and stronger. He displays a rare emotional reaction when it appears that Phryne has been killed in a car accident. He even distances himself from her as a result, feeling she is emotionally compromising him. Oh, good grief. The robot got some feelings and then bolted. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I've been compromised. I respect it, though. I respect it. Holds himself in high esteem and doesn't want, you know, any sort of emotions to get the better of him. I get it. I get it. But same time. Come on. Come on now. Live a little. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I will go down with this ship, Phryne and Jack, on Miss Fisher's murder mysteries. Uh, let's see here. It would have been nearly impossible for me to watch Miss Fisher's murder mysteries, uh, which is currently re-airing, blah, 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 and not fall instantly in love. Let's review the facts. The main character is a free-spirited modern woman who, despite her wealth and privilege, deeply invested in improving the world and helps everyone who crosses her, pass, her path. Check. The historical setting in late 1920s Australia, so the costumes are absolutely stunning. Agreed. Check. Ms. Fisher's pals include a snarky lesbian doctor, best friend. Check. An omniscient butler, literally named Mr. Butler. Check. <laughs> That's funny. Tenacious reformed jewel thief. Ward, check. Sweet, hardworking sidekicks who fall in love, check. A pair of rabble-rousing communist cabbies, double check. And mother freaking Miriam Mar Margolez. Margolese? As the snooty but loving elderly aunt. Triple check? A whole book of checks. Yes, the show has some blind spots. The 1920s setting allows the production to rather lean into or Orientalism? Uh, and while a couple of episodes do incorporate stories of indigenous Australians, black folks, I'd love to see more. All that being said, I haven't even gotten to the reason I use my hard-earned public media wages to buy the box set yet. That, friends, can be expressed in one word, frack. <laughs> frack. Oh my gosh. For those not initiated in the world of fan fiction, here's a quick primer. Ship describes not a seafaring vessel, but a relationship, usually romantic, between two characters, whether the show makes the relationship canon or not. I hate that ship name. Yeah, that is frack. Sounds like a curse. <laughs> um, like many ship names, frack is a portmental of the names. I've never seen that word before. Um, of the two characters involved, Phryne and Jack, obviously. Now, look, I can and will tell you all the reasons, but I think this pairing is so delightful. Well, let's get two things out of the way. Okay. One, still images really just can't capture the completely bonkers chemistry of these two actors. Uh, do, 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 somehow contrive to ooze out of their pores when they're in close proximity. Sometimes the production just gets lucky when two actors spark. And boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. This one is fire. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone live tweet their experience watching Miss Fisher's murder mysteries online, gleefully following their descent into madness that inevitably culminates for, with some version of, oh my God, just kiss already. <laughs> it truly has to be seen to be, be believed. I love this author right now. The writing style is just lovely. And I really think uh, you should see it. And that brings us to two, to say that these actors are attractive perhaps the biggest understatement I've committed to print. Tumblr user and one of my favorite fanfic authors, 
Fire Sign 2 3 tags all of her pictures of S.C. Davis. Congrats on your effing face. <laughs> and it's the most apt descriptor I've ever seen. I think about it often. I'm just as into hot actors with undeniable chemistry as anyone else. It's pretty much table t- stakes uh, for a network television ship, but there's a lot more to frack. And that's why I keep coming back to the show year after year. I do not like that name either. That is a terrible name. I get it, but I don't get it. That is awful. <laughs> um, one of the most refreshing things about this show uh, turns typical TV norms around. Oh, God. <laughs> Didn't I? Intimate. Intimate time on its head. I'm trying to come up with ways to get around these words. <laughs> Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It is what it is. I'm trying to do this live, and sometimes it just doesn't sound good. Uh, mm, you can read that on your own. <laughs> I'm just going to avoid that entire paragraph. I detest a will they, won't they, but there's something very satisfying about a human and human about a we could, but should we? Their experience means that these two actually communicate with each other. In the first season, Jack is still married to someone else. It's over. It's been over. But it's 1920, and he's pretty traditional. So despite the fact that he and Franny both clearly want each other, they respect that boundary. There's a bright line between what they will and won't do. They both know where the line is and constantly walk right up to that line, sit on the line's desk, enjoy late-night drinks with the line, but they won't cross it until they're both ready. It's an implicit affirmation of consent and a promise of more all in a tidy package, and it's absolutely part of what gives their relationship so much heat. Well, yeah, it's like the big tease, <laughs> and they're just constantly teasing you about it. Both of these characters survived World War I, and it's central to how they behave. Jack's caution, Bryony's risk-taking seem like opposing traits, but they both spring from surviving trauma, and crucially, both of the characters are fully aware of this fact. So if you're looking for a TV couple crush featuring two hyper-competent badass adults who respect the heck out of each other, constantly communicate, renegotiate their boundaries, and choose in every interaction to keep growing together, I've got a show for you. Top 10 of the best. Here. I wonder if there's a way to clean this up. There we go. 10 of the best moments between Miss Franny Fisher and Jack Robinson. When it comes to favorite couples or one true pairing, OTP, those are very few, uh, there are few, very few <laughs> more compelling and intense and brilliant than a certain crime solving Australian couple. Welcome back, Andy. Uh, when there's a couple we love, it's fun to spotlight some of their best moments because it's looking back at the moments that help define the relationship. Though we know he wouldn't mind if he did, the moments between these two don't go in a way most TV couples do, but they are there, and it's glorious. Very subtle, like I was saying. Throughout the entirety of the show, the banter, Jack and Franny miss many an opportunity to share something more. A confession is never extended. A kiss is always just out of reach. Just out of reach. Primarily because Jack exercises the best kind of control, and any time Franny makes an attempt to draw him in, it's quite brilliant, including one scene where she tries to help him undress into a costume for a party, posts him within inches of one another. Jack stays firm in his chivalry and tells her that if she wishes to have a Greek god, she'd best leave and allow him privacy. <laughs> um, The Kiss. Season 1, Episode 7, trying to protect her from being recognized, Jack does plan to kiss on Franny, and while the scene is good... Also unforgettable because it doesn't lead to anything. A scarf. Season 2, episode 6. Though brief and coming at the very end of the episode, this sporting even this sporting even scene is cute. Sharing a bit of banter, as they are prone to do, Jack places a scarf around her neck with an eye lock. They lean over ever slightly into each other. Romantic favorite Franny Fisher and Jack Rob. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I think it's the reader messing this up. The scare. One of Miss Fisher's worst habits is her disregard of safety and love of thrills. This all comes to a head 
when during one of his cases, Jack receives a call from his constable. A mangled phone call. All Jack hears are keywords like car accident and Miss Fisher. Rushing to the scene, he comes upon the car and assumes it's Franny beneath the sheet. When, she, when he sees it's not, he takes a moment to compose himself. Later in the episode, the two discuss the matter while Jack treats Franny with some reserve during the case. Finally, they have it out, sharing an emotional and painful moment. Franny begins by confessing, I know we have some minor points of contention, Jack, but we enjoy uncovering the truth together, don't we? He responds to say, therein lies the problem. Romantic favorite. What the heck? <laughs> There's that sentence again. Though she's confused, Jack goes on to explain, when I thought it was you in that wreckage, I found it unbearable. Unbearable. Roman soldier, not Greek god. We just saw the moment in the video. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, concerned for what this means, she queries, so you're giving up on me instead? Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Realizing how painful this is to Jack. There we go. <laughs> Skipped a little. Franny still stays steady in who she will continue to be saying, I am who I am, Jack. I can't give that up. With conviction in his voice, he tells her, I'm not asking you to give it up. I would never ask you to do that. In concerned for what this means, she queries, you're giving up on me, giving up me instead. A little else to say in realizing Jack is ready to leave behind what they do best together, casework. Franny confesses, if you did that, Jack, I would feel dot, dot, dot. I would feel like it was you lying in that wreckage. Please, can you think about that? With a simple, I will, Jack leaves. The piano, uh, their next case, has petty fighting, yet uh, they still share some banter, even as Jack tells her, I don't want you to go, I need you to go. This he asks of her when concerned for her safety, and they uncover more about potential murder. At the end of the case, watching from the doorway, Franny discovers Jack can play the piano. Pair sit together on the bench, share one of their meaningful looks that makes us want to simultaneously scream, kiss, for them to kiss. I'm also loving the way the script writes them. The almost night. Jack is genuine, genuinely a moral and good guy throughout. He resists Franny first because he's married and later because he's just a good guy with morals. But we never question his attraction to her. Yet he does have a moment of weakness one night, late at night. He shows up at her doorstep and says, what you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, and <laughs> she stands on the stairs, the two mere inches apart. We, along with Franny, know why he's there. Do we? Do we know? They don't connect beyond an eye lock, but it's f <laughs> fictionally glorious. <laughs> Romantic overture. Come after me, Jack. Don't let go, Jack. I'll never let go. In the series finale, Franny heads home to England to ensure her father gets what he gets where he needs to go. Prior to her leaving, Jack and Franny watch the stars, and a conversation about a romantic overture takes place just as they almost kiss. When she's about to leave, Jack races onto the scene and in the open field when Franny's plane is ready to depart, the pair kiss as she asks Jack to come after me. Uh, before she races off, leaving Jack wistfully watching her leave. <laughs> I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave. <laughs> uh, the rain. There's really nothing to write about this scene since there's not much dialogue. It's just a romantic scene in which Jack dashes after Phryne in her pursuit of a shadowy figure. And they share a close moment as the rain pours down around them. Sweet nothings. While attending a ball, because who doesn't love a ball? Having a ball at the ball. As the pair twirls around the room, as Franny leans in to share a clue with, Jack, with him, Jack curiously asks, Is this your idea of sweet nothings? Franny, somewhat confused, given Jack is still sore with her, asks, I thought they were out of the question. <laughs> Jack uh, twirls the sassy Miss Franny Fisher around the dance floor. There's that photo. Without missing a beat, and quite smartly, Jack replies, they are. Continue. The scene is brief and without any big kind of romance or gesture, yet it is somehow big. I can't help but think of Jack from Titanic. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know why that is. It just automatically pops into my mind. And the kind of conclusion to the journey for these two, you have my heart. On their way back from the travels, they stop for the night. 
in their separate quarters, Jack suddenly hears Miss Fisher scream as he rushes into her tent. He finds her fearful with one fear in her life, spiders. Jack captures the spider and disposes of it, but both are putting on a facade in order to be together. As Phryne confesses that spiders are her one fear, Jack tells her she's actually afraid of something else. You see, he believes, you're afraid if you fall in love with me, I'll turn you into a policewoman's wife. Try to stop you saving the world. Wow, that was... <laughs> Boy, he brought that up out of nowhere. <laughs> he went deep. He went very deep with it. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Flirting with him, she responds that becoming a wife or falling in love with him is out of the question. Uh, Jack, having loved her for these many years and lost her in more ways than one, gets vulnerable with her and replies, I don't need to marry you. I just need your heart because God knows you've got mine. Whoa. Whoa. Big words. Big, big words. Big moment. Giving up her flirting and showing him the same emotion Franny gives us and Jack a happy... <laughs> wow. Gives Jack a happy ending. Sealed with a kiss when she replies, Jack, I gave you that a long time ago. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Wow. I don't need to marry you. I just need your heart because God knows you've got mine. Bam. That is a, that is a well-written line. Golly. Damn. That is, that's nice. That's very nice. Wow. 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 <laughs> I like that. It's not over the top. It's very subtle. Um, you're not beaten over the head with it. It's very, we were swooning a little bit at that scene. I bet, I bet. That was very, um, you know what that reminded me of? It reminded me of um, Breakfast at Tiffany's where it's that big moment in the, uh, in the cab at the end. He's just like, you know, you put yourself in a cage or nobody's put you in a cage because you put yourself there or something like that. You're just afraid to love or whatever. And then they finally like reconnect in the rain and then they just passionately make out. That reminds me of that. <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like they've been flirting, 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 and then finally they just finally embrace the love, you know? Gosh, it's such a good movie if you haven't seen it. Such a classic movie kind of line. Right, exactly. Yes, it reminded me exactly of Breakfast at Tiffany's uh, towards the end. Good grief. That was, that was adorable. That was adorable. That was a lovely way to start the stream. <laughs> Good Lord. It's subtle. I like it. You know, many things nowadays, especially, you know, I mean, social media for sure. It takes about two seconds on social media to see some stuff you didn't know you were going to see. Um, but I like the subtlety. I like the banter. I like the back and forth. I like how proper it is. It's like very reserved and all that good stuff. Um, it very much feels like a period piece, you know, when you're watching and they're just like courting each other, but not making it obvious. Oh, it's just lovely. Lovely to see. It's not, uh, it's not something you see a lot of, so it's just kind of a different way of operating that apparently people used to do. I don't know. <laughs> apparently that used to be a thing. Let's go ahead and hop into the next video. It is Ajin and Fa, Bad Boys Bring Heaven to You. And this is from the show Enigma. Uh, let's see. Boy, this has a lot of views. Holy crap. 5.8 million views, by the way. 5.8 million views. Wow. This one is well seen. Let's go ahead and change, change it to a smaller looking video because I think we're going to get some, I'm assuming we're going to have closed captioning here. So let's do that. We were looking at HBO yesterday and found a show called Miss S, Chinese remake of Miss Fisher. Really? Wow. That's interesting. It's actually very interesting. Miss S. Let me 
Expect lots, lots of jaunty fun and fabulous fashions and ex- exciting new ad- adaptation. There we go. Can't talk. Australia's Miss Fisher's uh, murder mysteries that follows an unlikely detective, Miss S, and Inspector Luau. Luo. Okay, okay. That's interesting. The fashion's already amazing. Took like two seconds to see that. <laughs> All right, so it's got an 8.2 out of 10 on MDL, 500 users. That tells me it's probably worth a checking out. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. That is very neat. Very, very cool. If you're looking for something new, a little twist on it. All right, let's go ahead and start this video from Enigma. Let's do it. Love's my religion, he was my faith Something so sacred, so hard to replace Falling for him was like falling from grace How wrapped in one, he was so many sins Would have done anything, everything for him And if you ask me, I would do it again No need to imagine Cause I know it's true they say all good boys go to heaven, but bad boys bring heaven to you. It's automatic. It's just what they do. They say all good boys go to heaven, but bad boys bring heaven to you. He was an open man. Until they leave you hanging up, no cow home, cow and more people. Honey, this world prepares you for me. I wish I bowling. I'm not a shame that he wasn't the one. Had no idea. I'm gonna say, you have come. There's no regrets. I just thought it was fine. No need to imagine. Cause I'm gonna say, 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 I'm gonna
But yeah, Fifty Shades. <laughs> that's what that's from. Wow. Link down below in the YouTube description for the original edit. Go throw it some much deserved love. I'll say this. Um, <laughs> gosh. It's like a supernatural Fifty Shades. Like, I, that's the kind of feeling I'm getting from it, at least. Um, I have no idea if that's accurate. But, uh, wow. That is, that's something. <laughs> something that was steamy. A little steamy in there. Definition of Enigma. You know what's funny? I always think of Edward Enigma, a.k.a. the Riddler from Batman, whenever I see this word. Synonyms of Enigma. Something hard to explain or, or understand. An inscrutable or mysterious person. An obscure speech or writing. I think in this case, it's definitely one and two. Something hard to explain because he's definitely mysterious. I think that's a pretty apt title for this show, just based off what we've seen. Enigma. There is something wrong with Fa's high school. Strange events have been happening around her. In which way are they related to the new teacher? Ooh. Wait a minute. Hot for teacher? Is this what's happening right now? <laughs> oh, no. Teenager female lead, student supporting character, exorcist male lead. What? Age gap. Oh boy. Oh boy. Age gap. Age gap. Oh boy. Well. Oh. Okay. Well, why did I zoom in there? Come on now. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. Good grief. But, uh, all right, this might be a little better. 2023 Thai television series. Uh, it aired in 2023 on GMM 25 and Prime Video. So it is available on Amazon, I suppose. Ma is a 12th grade student at a school, one of the most prestigious educational institutions in the country. The school is renowned for its rigorous, rigorous, Academic standards, which often cause students to become obsessively focused on grades and test scores. Uh, as no exception to the rule, one day a top student snaps under pressure and stabs a teacher. Good grief. Causing serious injury. While the school at attributes this to academic stress, Boss suspects that there's more to the situation, as if her world is slowly revealing hidden cracks. When additional strange events unfold, these anomalies appear to be connected to an Enigmatic new teacher named Ajin. Uh, at first glance, he seems baffled and clumsy, yet there's something about him that keeps her intrigued. Her deepening involvement in these mysteries leads her towards a world far more dangerous than she ever imagined. It's a world she'd always considered a mere figment of imagination, but she's beginning to realize that with enough belief, it might just become reality. Four episodes... Uh, about an hour-ish with some ads. Uh, let's see here. So, Ajin comes across as a stereotypical geeky teacher, sporting glasses and messy hair, but there's an air of mystery surrounding him. Something unsettling that lurks beneath his seemingly unremarkable exterior. Ow! <laughs> unremarkable exterior. <laughs> Dang. It, babe. Oh, grish. Why can't a teacher be tattooed? Hmm. Uh, an inquisitive student, Ma, who finds herself plagued by doubt as a series of unsettling incidents unfold within her school, caught between cur curiosity and fear. Oh, boy. Reception. Uh, let's see here. Average audience share. I don't know if that's good. I'm assuming it's not. Point two. Doesn't seem like a lot, but who knows? It might be. Probably hundreds of thousands, if not. Yeah, probably hundreds of thousands. What teacher has that many tattoos? 
Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm going back in my Rolodex of teachers over the years. I don't think I ever had a teacher that was heavily tattooed. Can't remember that. Uh, it won a few, won a few awards here. Nominated for a bunch, won a few. Interesting. Here's a review. As long as we believe it, it'll come true. Yeah, this got a little interesting. <laughs> this got slightly a little more interesting um, with the whole teacher-student relationship thing. Don't get bored with my Thai drama review. I think GMM TV in 2023 produced many intriguing or interesting series. Enigma was one of it. Exceeded expectations. It's kind of horror, dark, and also disturbing. But don't judge the book by its cover at first glance. Even for this series, I'm act I'm sure actually there's so many people so many people waiting for this series to be aired and support it. Why? Of course. Who doesn't know when, especially his partner here is Prim. After we see them in F4 Thailand, uh, they finally reunited with Enigma. Fans who love Kaven and Kaning um, in F4 must be so happy the couple is back in this series as main lead. Let's see here. I thought it was going to be 10 to 12 episodes, but they only gave us four. My opinion, the series could also be eight to 10. The series don't, doesn't need many characters to become good, but because of it, I think we as audiences would guess the villain more easily. My rules when I watch any series or movie is to find a villain it should be someone who already showed up minimum one time in the story. I don't think about it at all. <laughs> I don't think about it at all. Um, Enigma didn't have many characters, but still in the beginning, I almost fooled. I, I was almost fooled, I think, to find who caused the chaos in the school. When it's revealed, it all made sense. Do, do, do. Okay, so it reveals itself over time. Why does this look like, this looks like it turned into like 50 shades or something. Like it's gotta be a spinoff or some sort of based off that. I don't know why that song just put that in my mind, but it seems so like accurate in a way. Like he has power over her. He's obviously a teacher. She's a student. Um, and then it just turns from like geeky, geeky boy to, I mean this. <laughs> I mean this. For when I think his character is quite different compared to other series. <laughs> Breathe. Indeed. Storyline's fast-paced in a good way. Uh, let's see here. Do. Thought it was fun to watch. They made it really creepy and disturbing. It looks so real. They did a good job for this. Probably could have been more episodes, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. That is one reason why I did not watch Pretty Little Liars. As soon as I saw that first episode, literally the pilot, and the students were coming on to that teacher. I can't remember the name of the teacher. As soon as I saw that, I literally just turned it off. <laughs> and I gave up on it. I was like, all right. Well, I don't know where they're going with this, but it's, it's not in a direction I want to witness. Because um, I think in that first episode, they actually kiss... Or like they start making out at like a, a bar bathroom or something, like a restaurant bathroom or something. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, that's usually when I check out of uh, any sort of series. I get it. Um, it's a very common 
thing to think about or fantasize about uh, sometimes for certain people. But uh, it just kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. Like, it's just, it's a little, ugh, you know, for me specifically. But if you're into it, whatever, I guess. But <laughs> I'm just not into entertainment that revolves around that. Um, I hate the plot trope too. Super gross. Yeah. It's not expecting a whole teacher student. Re- I had no idea that was going on. <laughs> Honestly. Um, other than that, it does look creepy. It does look interesting. Um, makes me wonder exactly what's going on. But at four episodes, there's not a lot of wiggle room there. Like the story has to be super tight and super well done. Otherwise, it's just going to be unfulfilling. But according to that one review, it seems okay. Um, you know what? I kind of want to look up. Does this have an MDL or whatever? I want to look that up. It does. Oh, my gosh. It's 8.5. Good grief. out of basically 5,000 users. Mild gore. Okay. Uh, One of the best Thai series dramas I've ever watched. This is totally unrealistic. Whenever anyone gives anything 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, I just immediately throw it out. (laughs) In my mind, nothing can be perfect. So it's just like, all right, throw that one out. Keep going. What do we got? Enigma is real. Real. Uh, those are all way too high. Come on, let's get something. Let's get a little, you know, more realistic numbers here. Ooh, acting cast. Ten. Music, five. It's <laughs> such an odd... The music sucked. Five. Wicked mix of horror, a sprinkle of comedy, and a dash of romance. Oh, boy. Main lead chemistry on screen is palpable. So what's their first date? Detention? Number one recommendation. I'm not a Thai drama fan. One of my friends asked me to watch this. Totally fall in love with it. Blah, blah, blah. 10 out of 10. Blah, blah, blah. There is such a thing as unnecessary romantic tension. It's a bite-sized show. Enigma knowing that black magic is rarely explored as a theme by GMM TV and the screenwriter and director O was enthusiastic about the show, acting as a pioneer in that regard. At its strengths, its cast, a majority women actors did a solid job. You can also see what O meant when he said he took a modern approach to making black magic more palatable for a present day audience. Balance between traditional, which is the origin of magic across all cultures, and modern tech. Social media, the dark web, web was evident. Still, I don't think it would be nice to go all out. I understand Enigma is a gateway and is appealing to an international audience, but I'm excited to see how much further black magic can be explored using the medium of mainstream horror dramas or movies that are accessible to a global audience. I would end by saying that, yeah, I am one of the people who thinks the romantic suggestions in the show were uncomfortable. There you go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. I was looking for someone to mention it. Before the show even aired, I had my backside. Boy, you rarely see that word typed out. (laughs) Is it one word or two? You know? You rarely see that one. (laughs) It's very interesting. Uh, Clenched, hoping to God it wouldn't be a student teacher. Well, he's not a real teacher. Great. Should we celebrate? Should we pop bottles? The implication is that he's an adult man with a career, and she's still a high school student regardless of if she's a senior or 18. Thankfully, the relationship was one-sided crush, okay? Or at least that's what was explicitly confirmed by the final episode. That's good. That's not to say there weren't some scenes with the two of them that made my eyes narrow. Like the necklace or her dressing his wounds. I'm sick of the trope and the way it goes over people's heads or even worse, people die to defend it. There is a season two and Fa graduates and ends up with a Jin. I'll consider that a defeat as well. Well, yeah, at that point, it's it's grooming, right? Although, hmm, 
The problem is it's not being shot down. Even if it's one-sided, you're still the adult. You should turn it down. <laughs> um, for now, I don't have too many hopes or expectations. Overall, Enigma was all right. It wasn't groundbreaking, but not a waste of time either. I mean, it's only four episodes, so I wouldn't consider it a waste of time unless it was just awful. It has its standout moments. I hope to see more black magic in the future, and more traditional culture in general. That's kind of cool. All right, so it's got that going for it. Pretty cool. To a global audience, too. Super addictive. Living up to the hype. What a spell. Just amazing. Again, if it's 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, I just, I throw it out. <laughs> win from win, amazing. Uh, hmm. I mean, seems like most people enjoyed it. So there you go. The title, A Crime Has Been Committed or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> that is kind of funny. I would say... It's probably worth a checking out if you can get past the fact that it is a <laughs> student teacher. If you can get past that fact, I'd say check it out. Um, honestly, it just makes me cringe. <laughs> it just truly makes me cringe. Yikes. If we didn't see that story headline more often with teachers and students in real life, uh, it wouldn't be as cringe, but the fact that we see that so freaking often is just disturbing. I literally just saw one yesterday of like a teacher, students, money, drugs, you know, just an insane happening. It was really awful. The headline was horrendous, but um, show looked good. Obviously, a lot of people enjoyed it. It's got an 8.5. On MDL. So if it's got an 8.5, it's probably decent. So I would definitely recommend checking it out or at least giving it an episode. Let's go ahead and jump into the next video. It is a bit of a shift, <laughs> a little bit of a shift here. Uh, we're going over to Sailor Moon. You bring colors to my world. It is a music video. Haruka to Mish Mishiru. Michiru. MDL can be skewed by either only diehard fans reviewing or by review bombing, so I don't trust the reviews too much unless the review is from someone I know. True. That is very true. Um, I think Rotten Tomatoes tries to fight against that, but honestly, I don't think there's any way to correct against it, honestly, unless you just throw out all the perfect tens and then just, or all the, like, the zeros or the ones or whatever. But... Uh, I don't know. Take take MDL with a grain of salt. But uh, at that point, I kind of factor that in a little bit. You know, review bombing and whatnot, just by saying anything over an eight is probably pretty good to go. Like, I would consider anything over eight to be great because it probably does have a lot of zeros uh, as well, which kind of weighs it down to eight. Because it seems like if people really enjoy something, they're giving it tens all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> and of course that kind of corrects for the tens and whatnot people have been re review bombing jung dunk's new show first episode really dang all right i don't know if we're gonna need closed captioning for this frankly maybe maybe not we'll go large we'll go large on this and we will check it out from there Let's go. You bring colors to my world. <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> right off the bat. Let's go ahead and make this a little smaller so we can actually read what the heck is happening. There we go. Wow, that was instant. That was instantaneous. Oops. 
ずいぶん詳しく僕のことを知ってるんだなこれ君が書いたのかいあなたって有名よね私の学校にもあなたのフリークがたくさんいるわよろしく。人間に戻ったよ大丈夫だ殺していたかもしれない、うん、次はきっと殺すわああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、ああ、Just cousins. Oh, they are my cousin. <laughs> wow, that was some explicit little drawings there, wasn't it? Good grief. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> Cousins don't stare lovingly into their eyes? Come on now. <laughs> Each other's halves. Yeah. Damn, is that the ending scene right there? That's brutal. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting that. Excellent edit. Link down below in the YouTube description for the original. Go throw out some love as I am doing right now. Go ahead and check it out. Check out the channel as well. They might have other videos that you might be interested in. That was a good ending. <laughs> Fade to black and everything. Wow. That is sad. Really sad. I don't know the story, so it's like... I don't know what just happened there, but... <laughs> Kate did not look happy when I started to ask if we were cousins or queer. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jace, that is wild. That is wild. All right. Let's go ahead and bring up some information. Uh, try to figure out what the heck was happening there. Obviously, they're in love. They are not cousins. Fem slash ship between Haruka and Mishiru from the Sailor Moon fandom. Canon dating. Let's see. The sections that need a major improvement. Yeah, there's nothing there. <laughs> In Sailor Moon S, Sailor Uranus, or Uranus, 
and Neptune are introduced as characters who are neither enemies nor allies. They appear in a third-party position. Third-party position. <laughs> um, while Sarah Moon's battles are typically based on the method of purifying her enemies and returning them to their original state of being, Uranus and Neptune appear with the idea of killing their enemies and aiming to shrink the situation. Although they are two people who fight in an outrageous manner, their way of being, which reveals their firm beliefs, is due to the fact that they hold a different opinion from Sailor Moon and her friends that the world cannot be saved just by being clean. Boy, I didn't know the overall, the overarching, <laughs> overarching theme of Sailor Moon was pollution. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, behind this belief, there is a sad episode in their past that has created a relationship that could be called codependence between the two. Uh, let's see if I can find out what that last scene was about. Mm -mm -mm. At that exact m oh, okay. She sees this, Haruka starts getting flashbacks of her lover's soft smile, and of that they intertwine their hands together. At that exact moment, Usagi arrives and sees that Mishiru is injured, so she goes to save her. She was going to do that. Haruka tells Mishiru that she cannot believe she was going to her own world without her, and goes to kill, uh, end herself, is what I'll say. Uh, Usagi quickly stops her, but she pushes her away and does so anyway. Later, Sailor Pluto... Boy, it's a really, like, Romeo and Juliet kind of thing. Later, uh, Sailor Pluto returns their talismans to their bodies and revives the both of them. Oh, so they both came back. Okay. <laughs> I was like, boy, that was getting very sad. Like, really sad. Maybe you misunderstood. A world without Haruka isn't a world worth saving. Yeah, there's very close cousins. That's what that is. I think you ate, eat too many sweets these days, <laughs> Shrew says. Haruka says, I never listen to that kind of talk outside of a bed. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Haruka, Mishiru, you're hurting me. Mishiru, am I? Haruka to Mishiru, I want you to touch me gently. Whoa. 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 Whoa, Mishiru, later when we're alone. <laughs> Boy, these are just very close cousins. Very close. The closest, you might say. Wow. Mishiru, are you blaming your sword? Haruka, I don't think I've lost my edge. Mishiru, shall we try it out to see then? Haruka, later when we're alone. <laughs> Boy, that they went back to that joke multiple times. <laughs> Good grief. Typical cousin behavior, indeed. In an interview with the Italian magazine Kappa, Takushi uh, said the relationship between Haruka and Mishiru is quite special. I would say so. Uh, I think the most important feeling in the world is friendship. Right. The friendship between them is so strong that it becomes love. Okay. There's not only heterosexual love, but there's also can be a homosexual love, in this case, between two girls. Boy, that was clinical. <laughs> Wow, that was a very clinical uh, explanation there. At the 98 San Diego International Comics Convention, uh, Takushi confirmed that Haruka and Mishiru were indeed intended to be seen as lovers. The question, are Uranus and Neptune lovers? And if so, why did you make them gay? Came from a young fan who wanted to hear a clear answer. 
uh, Nako-san answered that, yes, they were a couple. Naoko further commented that they had a relationship because they had, quote, lots of time on their hands. What? What? <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it. Well, they had a lot of time, so they decided to get into a relationship. What? <laughs> you see, they were bored, and one thing led to another, and then they were just together. You know? That happens all the time, right? Doesn't it happen to you all the time? You get bored, and they just wind up in a relationship. <laughs> Boy, those quotes. Those quotes were something. Holy cow. Wow, those are from TV episodes, huh? Those are from animes? Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. They were Moon 10 most romantic moments between Uranus and Neptune. Two girls always have a swooning throughout the series as they're slightly older than the than our inner sens- senshi and seem beautiful, mature, and powerful on top of that, their interactions with each other are so sweet and romantic, making them feel like a married couple that's completely in love. Here's the top ten moments. Mishiru awakens Haruka as a sailor scout. Mishiru is the only sailor scout who didn't have to be awakened by someone else. Seeing her destiny in a dream, she knew that she was meant to become a sailor in Neptune, or become sailor in Neptune. She also knew that Haruka was meant to be sailor Uranus, uh, Haruka doesn't want to face her destiny and blows Mishiru off, but Mishiru's gentle persuasion and light flirting eventually get Haruka to come around. Clearly destined to be together. Mishiru wants to ride in Haruka's car. <laughs> Is that innuendo? Cool chick with an awesome ride. And she sometimes even races on motor racing circuits. And she's constantly flirting with all the girls at school who want to ride in it. There you go. She teases <clears throat> Haruka about how many girls want to ride in her car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with her. And also makes it very clear that she also wants to be one of those girls. Mishiru plays violin for Hiroka. There's nothing more romantic than having a loved one play music for you. Mishiru is a world-class violinist. And while she often performs the recitals, while Haruka obviously attends, she also plays it just for Haruka. Uh, number seven, they sit in a window together playing with each other's hands. Definitely just the car. Right. Sometimes the quietest moments are the most powerful. We often see Mishiru and Haruka openly flirting or out in a public place in a coupley way. Some of the nicest times to see them together and which feel very intimate and romantic are when they're tucked away somewhere, just the two of them. They sit in a windowsill holding hands, quiet, letting their fingers just play with each other's and aren't talking very much about anything at all. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, the clothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Haruka wakes Mishiru up from a dream. Just a couple co- cousins there, you know, napping. <laughs> Just napping away. <laughs> Mishiru has a strong psychic ability, which is part of the reason she was able to wake herself up as a sailor in Neptune. Sometimes this means that when she dreams, she's seeing visions of the future, and she can get caught up in them. Boy, oh boy. Ruka wakes her, leaning over her, and scolds her for going off to another world and leaving her behind. It's a gentle, teasing scold, but it's still clear that Haruka doesn't want to live in a world where she's not with Mishiru. Mishiru, Haruka, and Otaru sit together like a family. Number five. Otaru's reborn as a baby taking care of her as if she was her own child, et cetera, et cetera. Number four, Sarah Neptune tells Sailor uh, Uranus to worry only about her own safety. They're often a team when they go into dangerous situations. They work well together and make a point of having each other's backs. 
Uranus, of course, tells her that's stupid and that they're going to be together as always. Their care for each other at this moment is subtle and sweet. Sarah Neptune and Sailor Uranus uh, work together to defeat their enemies, of course, usually in battle together, right? They barely need to speak to understand each other. Yeah, it's like two, it's like second nature that they just know what the other's going to do, and it makes battling so much easier, probably. Sailor Neptune gets hurt in trying to get to Sailor Uranus, number two. When they're both stuck in a magical trap, Neptune escapes hers to try to reach Uranus, getting wounded in the process. Her desperation to reach Uranus and make sure she's unharmed, even in the face of her own pain, is the definition of love. Number one, they reach for each other's hands as they die. Sarah, Neptune, and Uranus go undercover to try to defeat Sailor Galaxia from the inside of her operation. In doing so, they convince the other Sailor Scouts that they've betrayed them and that they're going to have to fight them along with Sailor Galaxia. It's all a fake out, of course, and at the last moment, Neptune and Uranus turn on Galaxia, but she's too powerful and actually ends up defeating them. While they don't die in a traditional way, they start to fade away. As they do, they reach out for each other's hands, as we saw. Where are we hoping to stay together, even in the face of death? Yeah, no, they're definitely not romantically involved, of course. Of course not. <laughs> they're just very close. Very close friends. Special friends. Super duper special friends. I feel like making them twins would have been better than cousins. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I think so too. Ay, ay, ay. Right. It still wouldn't cover it up, but I think the cousins was really just not even close to covering it up. Just cousins wink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sarah Moon, the complicated romance. Despite censorship attempts in the past, Sailor Uranus and Neptune remain one of the most popular queer couples in anime history. Let's see here. They're the hottest couple around. Fiercely devoted Sailor Guardians. In the anime, especially, they lack Usagi's sheer optimism, taking very pragmatic and underhanded tactics to achieve their goals, such as trying to kill Sailor Saturn to prevent her from inadvertently destroying the solar system. They do seem at first very distant from the rest of the group, which is softened somewhat. Sailor Pluto joins the ranks as the Outer Guardians. There's that photo again. What's very interesting about Haruka and Mishiru is that between them, they reflect the broader spectrum, both gender identity and sexual orientation, more than you might realize. While Haruka is exclusively attracted to women throughout the manga and anime, Mishiru flirts with multiple men. Do let's see. Sarah Moon's censorship, here we go, attempted to change their relationship, but that hasn't stopped fans from seeing them as a couple, which is apparently very freaking obvious <laughs> just from what we've seen and we've read. Upon release in America was subject to heavy censorship. Company behind Inspector Gadget and Captain Planet, he's our hero. <laughs> trying to take pollution down to zero. Cut many elements from the anime, including any LGBTQ plus content. When DIC lost the license to Sailor Moon, the last two seasons went to Cloverway, Cloverway, excuse me, who then decided to loosen up on some of the censorship for the last two seasons. However, Cloverway went all in when trying to cut any LGBTQ plus uh, content, which meant flamboyant men like Fish Eye were turned into women and the queer Haruka and Mishiru were turned into cousins. Amara and Michelle. 
By turning the two into cousins, Cloverway clearly thought it, that it could explain away their closeness and intimacy. How? What? <laughs> what? Strangely enough, the studio only changed the script, never cutting out any of the inst instances of visual intimacy. That's so funny. Oh my God, is that funny? They just half-assed it. <laughs> They're like, oh, I think we got it. We, we nailed it. <laughs> Nobody would ever suspect. <laughs> Nor did it cut the constant cherry blossoms that accompany Haruka and Mishu everywhere. Cherry blossoms in Japan are associated with spring and life. Two people sitting under a cherry blossom tree is seen as incredibly romantic. Laughably, Cloverway went out of its way to make sure every character commented on how close Amara and Michelle were as cousins without censoring the romantic musical swells that came whenever the two entered a scene together. Their physical closeness or the cinematic shorthand indicating the two were a couple. In fact, a lot of kids watching Sailor Moon at the time picked up on the fact that Uranus and Neptune were way too close to be cousins. That's so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's unbelievable. One of the big draws to the Viz dub of Sailor Moon is that Viz released the whole anime uncensored and in English for the first time, which meant many fans were finally able to see Ruka and Mishiru romance each, uh, each, an each another, each other in English <laughs> as originally intended. Good grief. That was, that was something. How confused these kids were. <laughs> yeah, right. That's unbelievable. They didn't, they s half censored it. Like, who is not going to be able to pick up on that visual intimacy? Like, it was there. <laughs> it was very obvious. That is so funny. Oh, my gosh. That is ridiculous. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was a nice video. Good sentiment. Obviously, um, you would think nowadays people know what was going on there and what they were trying to hide and all that stuff. So it's cool that, you know, these edits are around so people can, you know, people my age at least that didn't see that and saw all the censorship, um, you know, get a little, get a little treat, a little treat. <laughs> gosh, that's so funny. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's hop into the next video. It is a BL. It's from Given which is an anime music video. Uh, looks like it's two different pairings, actually. Mafuyu and I'm not even going to attempt that other one. Haruki and Akiko, I think, called Blind, which I think is the name of the song. Yeah, it is. By Corey Harper. The song is Blind, if you want to check it out. Let's go ahead and bring that up. Alrighty. I'm assuming this is going to have closed captioning, so we're just going to leave it. <laughs> we're just going to leave it like that. それ Oh, jeez. Oh, I did not see that coming. Oh, 
俺は真冬が好きだってツラですお俺俺おかしいですか全然目があって寒気のような震えがあって相当昔に振られてただ俺がいまだにブラブラぶら下がってるだけです。Oh, wow. So, so much to know. Just kidding. Just kidding. Obviously, not dealing with it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. ちょっと待ったあのさ普通に怒ってるかおいハルキおいつかてって俺って必要なくない誰かがあいつらを支えなきゃならないしお前必要だって俺結構ずっと言ってるよな真冬俺はお前の音が好きだよ寂しくないよお前が来てから俺の音は跳ねて途切れて歪んで悪かっためちゃくちゃなんだごめんなんでお前じゃないんだお前はよく頑張ったお前変わったなおいで大丈夫一番かっこいいよ。はい。大沼くんが好きだよ。Was torn. <laughs> like the music is great. Like the song was wonderful. But the themes, the heaviness of that edit and that show just hit me like a ton of bricks. It's like, whoa. um Obviously, it's dealing with some flashbacks here of, you know, one of the people, I have no idea who, uh ending themselves a year before and just kind of being lost, being in this weird. You know, transition phase where you're just not sure where to go. You're not sure what to do. You lost somebody you clearly loved. Hey, wow, that was uh, that was something. Really pulled on my heartstrings. Yeah, absolutely. That was it. Caught me off guard for sure. That was a heavier than I expected. Yeah, it was. It was absolutely heavier. Tightly clutching his Gibson guitar. Mafuyu steps out of his dark apartment to begin another day of his high school life while taking a nap in a quiet spot on the gymnasium staircase. He has a chance encounter with fellow student Ritsuka, uh, who berates him for letting his guitar strings rust and break. Noticing uh, Inoyama's knowledge of the instrument, Tatu pleads for him to fix it and to teach him how to play. You know, Yama eventually agrees and invites him to sit on a sit in on a jam session with the two bandmates, bassist Haruki and drummer Akihiko. Uh, Satu's voice is strikingly beautiful, filling Inoyama with the determination to make Satu the lead singer of the band. Though reticent at first, Satu takes the offer. After an emotional meeting with an old friend, with the support of his new friends. The two must not only learn how to play the guitar, but also come to terms with the mysterious circumstances that led him to be its owner. Oh. Oh, the guitar. Oh, I did not realize <laughs> that the guitar was of the person that ended themselves. He just kind of inherited it. 
That's why he was so close to it, but he didn't know how to play it. That's starting to make sense. All right, so out of, good grief, out of 300,000 users, it has a score of 8.3 on uh, my anime list. Wow. Want to watch unique and cool vibe story with these relatable characters and a band music? You should watch this. We can all be relatable too, as it gives roller coaster rides of emotion, love, self discovery, grief, loneliness, hatred, and happiness. Love the atmosphere. It feels soft and calming, but I know those two are cool. The anime could be a representation of LGBTQ plus relationship. I love how genuine the characters are. Oh, could be. It definitely is. <laughs> Overall, you should watch this if you want a slice of life genre. Both cool and deeply moving vibes. No question that Given is the BL anime of a modern era. It's the most watched BL on my anime list. It's also disappointing. Oh boy. Here's the thing. Given as a drama, it takes itself extremely seriously, so I'll... So I will take it extremely seriously as well and thus come to the conclusion that it's not as deep and intelligent as it markets itself to be. It's not bad. It's a compelling, competent story. And the relationship between the leads is well done. Uh, they had good chemistry. The relationship is well developed. I like the, how the uh, person was awkward and inexperienced. <laughs> There's one main source of drama in this show, grief. Yeah, as we saw, that was shocking. It's a movie, not a show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the same movie. Yeah, movie. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, grief for sure. I don't consider this a spoiler, but if you want to go in blind, stop reading now. Before you, the love interest is grieving. Very specifically, he is grieving his late boyfriend who ended himself. And that, that's something. In fact, it was why I wanted to watch the show to begin with. It has so much potential to be a very grounded and deep story about not just grief, but the very specific trauma of losing someone to that act. There's so much room there for it to be such a meaningful story about processing trauma and recovery. And well, I can't say it's not that, but I will say I don't think it's enough. The way it addresses this clear trauma is very akin, very skin deep, and it feels almost like set dressing. It's there. And Mafuyu clearly thinks about it regularly, but we don't really get to see any introspect, introspection or reflection about his feelings let alone the nasty effects that kind of trauma inherently has. I would assume the dark room filled with beer cans and, you know, just kind of moping around, obviously being very sad and grieving and stuff like that. I mean, that is nasty. Maybe it's not all of it. It doesn't encompass everything, but it, it is certainly part of it. Um, you want to know something, Yuki? Mufuyu's late boyfriend didn't just end himself. He ended himself after the two had an argument. Oh, boy. And then Mufuyu was the one who found him. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That's brutal. Oh. Yeah. Dang. That's, 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 yeah, guilt. That is dark. That's so dark. It needs more. It needs more introspection about how personally hurt he is, how he simultaneously blames himself and Yuki, how he hates himself for causing this, but hates Yuki for doing this to him, how he still gets flashbacks of finding, finding Yuki, how he still loves Yuki despite all that. Just something. But we don't get anything like that. It's a trauma that inherently causes a storm of conflicting emotions and negative effects, and we don't see anything like that. We just see, know he's grieving, and it's sad. Remember, this isn't just a drama, but a romantic one. Dating again while you're still grieving your old partner is difficult and complicated, so it should come with a lot of reflection on the trauma and grief, but in Given, it doesn't. 
Fuyu is grieving and sad, but he never talks about his feelings, shows any nasty side effects, or lets it affect his new relationship. Wow. So really, he's the healthiest person ever. <laughs> he doesn't bring doesn't bring prior baggage into the relationship. Just completely starts anew, even though he's still grieving. There's no way. Come on now. That's that's a little unbelievable. Clearly, it would work its way in somehow, right? Romanticized grief, indeed. I can't imagine going from that situation to immediately into a relationship while you're still grief. It happened a year ago. That would take so long <laughs> to get over and stop blaming yourself and, you know, be open to other feelings and stuff. Like, that just feels like a gross rebound <laughs> at that point. Like, that is not good. I would stay single forever. Yeah, that would, that would, that would hurt bad. Like, I don't know how that would affect me or what I would do differently, but I think I would be single for a while if that happened. Whoa. I get it. You know, some people have to be in relationships or, you know, maybe feels like it, it would help or something like that. But the other person in that situation, like I would never want to get into a relationship with someone grieving that. Like that would be weird. I would feel like I was taking advantage of them in a weird way, you know, where it's like they're vulnerable. They're like super vulnerable. They're really like insecure. It would just feel kind of gross honestly. Although he probably has the feeling of like he's helping or maybe he'd help him out of the situation, but I don't know. Inside myself, I would just feel kind of gross about it. Um, my only real hang up with these 12 episodes, as I said, the story is competent and the main romance is well-developed. Although I would not have put their first kiss during the one time Mafuyu was grieving the most. Oh God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That screams rebound so badly. Uh, in this first season, the beta uh, couple is also fine, although this does only apply to the first season. I'll warn you now, the first movie is focused on the beta couple, and it includes the infuriating BL trope of a character being essayed by his love interest. In fact, it's worse than a lot of other BL that play the SA as sexy and romantic because Given fulls play or fully plays the SA for drama, presenting it as horrifying and upsetting, but then the victim still chooses to forgive the perpetrator and they end up together in the end. It was a really graphic scene of SA too. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's like that movie. That's like that movie that uh, I told you not to watch <laughs> that I will not bring up, but I will say that. That's exactly what it was. It was horrific. Um, good grief. This is dark. <laughs> this is, this is, here's, my, here's my one word takeaway. Dark. Dark. This review is marked as a 7 out of 10 because it's only for the first season. It's easy to pretend the movie didn't happen, but I thoroughly, thoroughly dislike the movie, so I'd probably give the manga a 6 out of 10. Not bad, but disappointing. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, the grieving into a relationship is just terrible. Um, wouldn't recommend it, just based off of what I'm reading. And, yeah, this scene, this scene is probably pretty hard to watch. Uh, yeah, that's, I was willing to try it, but now, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's dark. It's dark. I can't imagine you would enjoy the show unless you are strongly into BL. But wouldn't you be if you're watching? <laughs> what? Yeah, that is, Wow. I would be interested to see like how they treated the grieving like on a more like specific detail. Um, that's kind of interesting to me to watch it and see how they deal with the grief. But, oof. 
Yikes. Uh, an anime adaptation was released in 2019 with 11 episodes at 20 minutes each. Uh, the given movie was released in 2020 with 59 minutes. 59 minutes? That's hardly a movie. Like a show. <laughs> Wait, what? Like a bonus episode. With the title of Given Movie 1, this movie sequel focused more on Akihiko and Haruki. Uh, where the given manga story is completed, with, while that continues to receive anime adaptations covering the chapters, there is a sequel story for the series called Given 10th Mix, which began in 2024. Okay, just literally began. Boy, this is, this gets dark and weird and interesting. It is interesting, but it's dark. Wow. Started publishing in 2013. Got some CDs of it. That's kind of interesting. All right, so there's, oh, okay. The third movie is scheduled to air in 2024. These are short movies. <laughs> Literally just an hour. Sequel continuing the story where the anime episodes covered up in the manga. Manga, excuse me. First anime movie was released a year later in 2020. 2023 announced on Twitter the new anime movie is in the works. Released January 27, 2024. Good grief. That was something. Let me just scroll up from those images. I saw it for like a half second. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> the stream started in such a lovely place and now we're here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh my gosh. Let's get into the ships, shall we? He held so much sadness in such a small, frail body. If he were to ever love again, I wish I was the one he would come to love. Well, there you go. Slash ship between Ritsuka and Mafuyu. Ritsuka uh, usually goes to sleep between classes on top of a stairway, but one day there's another guy already sleeping there. Mafuyu. When Mafuyu wakes up, he looks at Ritsuka and offers him a seat. Mafuyu is carrying a broken guitar with him and asks Ritsuka if he could fix it for him. Ritsuka agrees, and when he's done, he tunes the guitar and plays a tune to test the sound. Mafuyu is amazed by this and asks him to teach him. Uh, wants, Ritsuka wants to decline the request because he has never taught someone before and tells Mafuyu to go to the Light Music Club instead if he wants to learn. But also tells Mafuyu that if he's serious, he can show up to one of his band's practices, end up going together. Mafuyu doesn't show up, didn't show up to the stairway after that. Ritsuka wonders why he's so uneasy. There, Ritsuka arrives at the music studio together with Akihiko and is furious to find Mafuyu there. His anger transforms into confusion as Haruki points out to him that Mafuyu has changed his guitar strings by himself. Mafuyu tests the sound and asks Ritsuka if it's tuned. In return, asks Mafuyu if he visited the Light Music Club. He did, and he learned some things. They start doing one-on-one -on -one teachings. The two gradually get closer. Um, thinks it's odd he's not sociable, completely different. Ritsuka asks Mafuyu to join the band after hearing him sing, obviously to make him the lead singer. Uh, do, do, do. They were decided it's fine if he doesn't sing because they were originally an instrumental band anyway, but on the day of the performance, Mafuyu does end up singing. Everyone's touched by his song. After the performance is over, Ritsuka drags Mafuyu backstage and kisses him. They begin dating shortly after. Well-received ship among uh, manga readers and as well as people who only watch the anime. 
you did so good out there. Quote, believe in you, son. Quote, I like you. I love you. I like you. I love you. <laughs> um, I mean, in a romantic kind of way. Ooh, dropping some hints, some subtle hints there. Dancing around it. <laughs> you can check out that fan fiction on your own. <laughs> we will not be bringing that up on stream. Aki Haru. Aki Haru. Quote, the reason I decided to make changes in my life was because I wanted to become a man worthy of your love. The Akihiko to Haruki in the movie. Class ship. Dating married. Oh, whoa, whoa. Married. In the first episode of the anime, are introduced as members of Ritsuka's band, The Seasons. Shown to be good friends, talented musicians. Episode 2, shown experimenting with part of a song. They interact during a smoke break. Uh, episode 3, two, smoke together in a parking lot. Akihiko rubs his head, saying that Haruki is like everyone's big bro. So four, Haruki observes Akihiko and Yayoi from the roof of the university they attend, getting annoyed when they walk off together. Oh, jealousy. Jealousy alert. <laughs> Big time jealousy. Um, they discuss Mufuyu's vocal abilities and role in the band, as well as their own music tastes. Akihoko, Akihi, Akihiko <laughs> calls Haruki's taste, quote, cute, to which Haruki is annoyed. Is revealed that Akihiko is a music major and plays the violin as well as the drums. Ruki says that he thinks that the reason they all get along so well is because they have different tastes in music. Episode 5, they, they're hanging out at a bar. Hello. Trying to light a cigarette, Haruki accidentally singes his bangs. Ooh, how did that go wrong? <laughs> Akihiko holds them in his hands, remarking in a flirtatious tone. And it's because Haruki keeps letting them grow out. What? After staring at each other for a moment, Haruki pulls away in embarrassment. Akihiko then asks Haruki if he can come over to the apartment that night. Hello. He's way too drunk to drive home. <laughs> way too drunk to drive home. Uh-huh. Before he lets Akihiko in, it, Haruki has a moment of panic in his apartment at the prospect of Akihiko being in his house. He then trims his bangs in the bathroom. But before he can put his hair up, Akihiko comes in and asks if he can tie up Haruki's hair. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Flashback sequence then begins, showing the beginning of the relationship two years prior. Do, do, do. And the present flustered that the man of his affections from two years ago is currently asleep on his couch. cuteness of Akihiko chewing in his sleep as well as trying to take a picture of him. Oh boy. Taking pictures of people while they're asleep. Ay ay ay. Akihiko then wakes up saying that he's sober enough to drive and then said goodbye at the door. Akihiko then travels to his apartment and upon walking in is greeted by a man in his bed who affectionately calls him Aki. Whoa. Episode 6, the band is seen together in the studio. So the movie, as opposed to the series, which focused primarily on the relationship between Mufuyu and Inoyama, the given movie centers around those two, Ruki and Akihiko, and their roommate Murata. Hmm. All right. Many people were happy when in the movie and manga, Akihiko finally returned Haruki's feelings and both became an official couple. Ship is greatly appreciated, accepted. 
or maybe a small part of the fandom that dislikes the ship due to either liking Akihiko and Yugetsu more or disliking it because Akihiko sec- mm, harassed, <laughs> I almost said it, uh, harassed Haruki. Nonetheless, it's still popular. And you can check out that fan fiction on your own time. <laughs> Very interesting. Boy, that was way darker than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think the main thing for me that remains interesting is just how Mufuyu gets over that grief. I mean, how do you move past that? On its surface, I have no idea how you get past that. Like, that would take intense, intense introspection and forgiveness. That's probably the biggest one. Forgiveness for sure. Good grief. Boy, that, that went real, real fast is what happened there. That went so real. Therapy, yeah. Years, years of therapy, probably. That's a no for me. <laughs> this just reminded me of that uh, SpongeBob meme where it's like, all right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Let's hop into the fifth and final video of the day. It is uh, Tay Tawan being himself for five minutes straight. Not exactly sure what's going to happen here, but uh, it should be interesting. I'm assuming it's going to have closed captioning, so I'm going to leave the video in its smaller state so we can see all the lettering. But let's go ahead and bring it up, shall we? Thanks, everyone, for hanging out and being here. I appreciate it. Hope you've had a wonderful Monday night or morning or wherever you are. <laughs> That's the thing. We are all over the place in time zones. Another Thai GMM TV actor. Okay. Has been in BL ships. Nice, nice. All right. Let's go ahead and do it. Shirtless? Question mark. <laughs> uh, we'll see. I wonder if I need closed caption. Although the auto translates horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Google image search. There you go. Thank you, I'll die. That's funny. Okay, for the love of everything. I love how when I adjust it, because I'm like, there's no closed captioning. There's immediately closed captioning. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, we'll keep it here. And whatever happens, happens. Deal, deal. Oh my gosh. Oh. Could you imagine walking up to fans with your fly down? Like, oh my gosh. You'd be petrified. Oh. 
Why do I feel like I'm watching myself? Yeah. I think we all have moments like this sometimes. There's <laughs> 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 one excited dog. <laughs> โอ้ทำไมเป็นคนแบบนี้เนี่ยพี่ไปใครพี่ไปใครโอ้ยอย่าโดนโอ้ยโอ้ยโอ้ยโอ้ยโอ้ยโอ้ยโอ้ยโอ
also known as Tay. He's a human, indeed, as opposed to the uh, the robots that are superstars. <laughs> Thai actor, host, and model from Bangkok. Went to university. Started as one of the hosts of Bang Channel's Five Live Fresh in 2014. In the same year, he made his television debut with Room Alone 401 to 410 and earned widespread recognition after making it in CLEO, Thailand's 50 Most Eligible Bachelors of 2014. He played the main role as Pete in Kiss the Series, who went on to reprise his role as Pete in Kiss Me Again and in Dark Blue Kiss. <laughs> Was that in the ocean? Was that ocean-themed? He also played the role of Karan, or Karen, <laughs> in the Thai adaptation of Japanese manga Cherry Magic. Age 33. Doesn't look a day over 24, I'm going to say, 24. Uh, his studies focused on science and math. Initially took up a bachelor's degree in chemistry. All right. Decided to shift and take up instead a bachelor's degree in economics at the same school. Wow. Okay. Okay. I heard good things about Cherry Magic adaptation. 2023 Thai BL television series, GMM TV. Aki is a worker at a stationary company, but one day he discovers an article stating that once you turn 30 and you're still, <laughs> how am I going to get around that word? <laughs> and you're still haven't been in the end zone. Uh, you will gain a special power. <laughs> he soon figures out uh, that he has gained a special power. Oh, he's turned into a wizard, has he? The ability to read people's minds, but everything takes a turn once he reads the mind of uh, Karen or Karan or something. Um, his most famous, handsome, and kind coworker having a crush on him. Knowing this, he tries his best to keep his distance. Interesting. So he's gained a magical power. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That is kind of funny. He's been active since 2014. Wow, he was ordained. Okay, 2017. Let's see, started off support role, main host, guest role, support role, support, 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 guest, main, 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 support, main, 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 main. So obviously becoming more of a main host or a main role. That's good. Good trajectory. Peaceful property is Peach. That was 24. Got a few songs out. Award. Good grief. Look at this winning percentage. Oh my gosh. Wow. Good winning percentage there. Not bad, not bad. All right. Tay, Thai actor under GMM TV. As a photographer, really. Tay had a showing. An auction of his work at Never Normal Studio and has a dedicated photography Instagram. Outside his acting and hosting career, co owns a clothing and accessory brand named, named No Grass Type, a spa called Bamboo Secrets, and a Japanese food delivery business called Salmon San. Wow, that is interesting. A food delivery business. Ordained with Buddhism is a very specific thing. Uh, you can be ordained and study with monks for a few weeks or so. It's an honor. Other BL actors like Max, Max Nat, and Toll, Mutol, uh, have been ordained by monks. Wow. Impressive.
Well, he's been in some quality work just based off these uh, MDL ratings. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Obviously good. What happened to Tay Tawan? Health update, what? May 29th, 2024. What? Generate key takeaways. This AI stuff is everywhere, isn't it? Good grief. Don't get me started on Apple Intelligence. GMM TV has shared a health update on the popular Thai actor, Tay. Earlier this year, he performed at the Polka Time Traveling Concert alongside his Cherry Magic co-star, New. Following that, Tay made appearances at several events. He was seen at the GMM TV outing 2024. May 29th of this year, GMM TV announced in a statement that Tay had suddenly fallen ill and is, quote, currently staying in the hospital to receive treatment following medical advice. Furthermore, the statement that all of the actors' scheduled work has now been postponed. Following the announcement, fans of Tay rushed to the comments and social media to pour in well wishes for the actor's speedy recovery. Notably worrying because Tay's health update comes after another GMM TV artist, Chimone, uh, has been battling health issues. The actor previously withdrew from the Love Out Loud Fan Fest 2024. Chimone has also withdrawn from GMM TV Fan Day 12. Ooh. New replaces Tay for upcoming event. Interesting. Been with GMM TV a while and he's good rep. From what I can tell. Chimone rhymes with, oh, Simon. Oh. <laughs> so it's Chimon. Got it. Uh, appreciate that, Slayer Kitty. Dang, that's not good. Hey, I'm being Tay. I often live in my head more than in reality. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. That is, yeah. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. During Tay's brief stint in Room Alone 20, 20, 2014, excuse me, the Bangkok-born actor gained widespread attention that would make him a mainstay in Thailand's public eye, but not for the reasons you might expect. His well-proportioned looks, perhaps? Charming demeanor, demeanor close. Better understand Tay's true appeal would require some answers from the audience that have paved the way for his acting career and his better-known hosting pursuits. Goofy, quirky, and in his world are just some of the words that are heavily associated All right, let's get some quotes here. Why did you decide to venture into hosting and acting when you were younger? I was just looking for a side hustle to earn additional income while studying. It was an opportunity to step out of my comfort zone and try my hands at things I might not have been good at before. Interesting. Would you consider yourself a control freak? It's true that I tend to be a bit of a control freak as I strive for perfection in the things that matter most to me. Admittedly, I become frustrated when things don't go as planned. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Yet I'm often hesitant to confront others about it. As I continue to mature and grow older, I recognize the importance of acknowledging my limitations and accepting that certain aspects of life are beyond my control. Very true. Very true. You can only... I would only worry about the things you can control. Obviously, you know, you worry a little bit of it, but shouldn't have control over you. Things you can't control. Describe a typical day in your life. In the famous words of Rihanna, work, 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 work. Laughs. I find myself constantly engaged in various work-related tasks every day. However, during periods of downtime, I prioritize a healthy morning routine, including a nourishing breakfast and pursuing, perusing, excuse me, the internet. Occasionally, I enjoy spending time with friends and through solo gym sessions and even, tr even travels to break up monotony. Although my schedule may seem straightforward, I find beauty in the simplicity of my day-to-day -day life. That is beautiful. Really bringing it down to very simple things, nothing too crazy. Day-to-day -day life is, is lovely. It's when you add it up, <laughs> when you start to fear it. Same reason Bible got into acting and modeling. 
Okay, okay. Side hustle. You're well known for being extremely goofy. Yeah, I'd say I'd say that video edit that we just watched. I would say goofy. Yes. On TikTok alone, I found multiple compilations of moments where you're being being silly and clumsy, <laughs> spilling sauces, knocking things over. Must have seen the exact same video. <laughs> and going to the airport with an expired passport. Oh gosh. Oh no. Would you consider that to be one of your strongest personality traits? I often wonder if my tendency to be lost in thought is a sign of processing or possessing a weak or strong character. I often live in my head more than reality, leading me to overlook simple things like the beauty of a scenic drive or a chance encounter with a stranger. Boy, that was deep, wasn't it? That, was, that got really deep. Wow. My mom knows this about me all too well, so I may sometimes come across as clumsy or absent-minded. I need more time and patience when learning new tasks because I'm good, not good at learning quickly. Ooh. Perhaps many of my fans may think my forgetfulness is part of what makes me special. I definitely learn things quickly, but uh, I'm, I definitely relate to this, overlooking simple things. Uh, just because you're just stuck in your own head, you're thinking of other things, you're, you know, what should I do with this? What should I do with that? Can't say anything, though, that happened to me before. Oh, gosh, the expired passport. That's brutal. We're all known for being exclusive. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fans seem to enjoy that silly side of you as well. In an industry where most celebrities w would conceal their personalities, yes. I think you are one of the uncommon ones who have embraced your true self on screen. Perhaps being a host may have contributed to this. Yeah, that is, that's so true. That's so true. Most of them, or a lot of people, especially when you get famous, they hire, you know, PR firms and, and whatnot, just to kind of like coach them on how to present themselves and how to look better and how to do things very non-offensive. You know, they want to be as clean cut and frankly boring as possible as to not, you know, alienate people and your fandom and whatnot. Like it's very, they just try to wash you basically, um, which is kind of gross. Honestly, I don't like it, mainly for the fact that it, it erases your personality. You become less of a relatable person. Um, but I get it. I understand it. I, I understand what they're trying to do, but it's just it's weird to me. I don't know. I don't like it. Over the last three years, I've realized that being true to myself is the key to genuine happiness. Yes. Previously, I believed that I needed to conform conform to certain expectations to be accepted or liked by others, literally what I just said, uh, which left me feeling unfulfilled and unhappy. Yes, because you're constantly hiding yourself and your thoughts and you're putting on this facade that's just completely fake. But now I know I don't have to pretend to be any, anyone else to be accepted and appreciated by those around me, and that is a beautiful thing. That is freedom, folks. <laughs> freedom. I can show up for any shoots and other commitments as my true self, which has resulted in a deeper sense of contentment and joy. Yeah, you get to enjoy. Th His smile seems legit. Like if he's smiling in these videos, you can tell he's having a good time. That's, that came across very well. Even though there are moments when I feel the pressure to conform to certain norms, I remain committed to staying true to myself and living my life authentically. Wow, yes. That is such a healthy mindset. It's crazy to hear that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you share the most memorable moment with the GMM TV family? Sense of community at GMM TV is truly heartwarming. So grateful to be a part of it. We come together to lift each other up, promoting each other's work on social media. Really like a family, feel fortunate to be part of it. Uh, I'm often mistaken for a naturally cheerful and outgoing person, but the truth is I tend to keep to myself and only have a small circle of close friends. In the past, I have found myself molding my personality to fit in with others and striving to make those around me happy, even at the expense of my own comfort. I always hide my vulnerabilities to maintain a sociable behavior, but in reality, I feel most at ease when I can retreat into my haven. 
Yeah. <laughs> that is so relatable. Good grief. Tay is extremely relatable. Despite this, when I decide to step out of my comfort zone and engage with the world around me, I consciously try to put my best foot forward and approach each opportunity with enthusiasm and optimism. Wow. This is such a healthy mindset to have. It's crazy to read this. What role have you always wanted to try as an actor? Dylan. Interesting. Yeah, portraying antagonists offers an opportunity to delve into complexities. That's very true. Love the way he thinks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is healthy thinking. It's it's honest. It's it's really odd <laughs> to hear an actor talk like this. Um, I I don't know if you've ever seen. Well, okay, you have seen this. I don't know why I said that. You have definitely seen this. When actors are in interviews, sincere, yes, very raw and honest. When you've seen actors in interviews, whether it's a press junket or something like that, um, and they're asked about anybody else, it's always fawning. Oh, they're the best. They're the best to work with. It was so great to work with them. Uh, you know, da da da. It just comes off as so fake. <laughs> In any real existence, there would be a little bit of humor to it. Maybe they'd tell you a little inside scoop on the person or, you know, something like that. It's just the fact that everyone you've ever worked with is the greatest person you've ever worked with. It just, it, ugh, it's just so fake and gross. Um, I get why they do it. Obviously, they want to keep that door open for future projects so they don't want to insinuate anything negative. But yeah, it's, yeah. Yes, Patty Lapone was naming names last week's stream. That is true. That is true, which is why I was shocked. <laughs> that was truly shocking to hear that. I was like, wow, she keeps it real. She keeps it real. And I feel like Tay would keep it real, which is interesting. Um, at least real with himself. That is, this is a breath of fresh air is what this is. Been in the industry for, and he's been in the industry for 10 years, almost 10 years. And to still have that healthy a mindset is wild to me. I feel fortunate to be part of the entertainment industry today as a greater sense of acceptance and openness towards diversity. Um, expanding my fan base globally. The internet played a significant role. Is there anything you would have done differently in your career? Honestly, I like to focus... Uh, first, on what I'm doing right now, I'm always striving to improve in my current endeavors. However, I'm open to exploring new new opportunities. One avenue that intrigues me is acting on a live stage. And while I w may wait until I feel fully prepared, I'm excited at the prospect of taking this challenge in the future. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Two exciting events are coming up this year. Can't wait for. Obviously, this is before the health thing. Hmm. Wow, that was impressive. <laughs> Might be why he's still in the industry, because he's got his head screwed on. Yeah, that is a good point. That is a very good point. I do love the line of uh, I feel most at ease when I can retreat into my haven. Like the accuracy of that is crazy to me. <laughs> oh gosh. It is amazing how we all, you know, I'd say most of us put on this public facade that's whether it's slightly different than, you know, us at home or a lot different because <laughs> I think we've all seen celebrities that are just completely nothing. Like they have no personality, nothing involved. Um, Mr. Beast comes to mind. He's, he literally has said in interviews and podcasts that he tries not to have a personality in videos. So he doesn't offend people either way. Um, so that's like the extreme case. 
And then you have, you know, little tweaks and here and there that you think will be more palatable or whatever. Um, it's interesting. He has this perspective and this amount of wisdom, like this is wisdom to me being able to be yourself no matter what, and don't let the industry get to you. And, you know, when I decide to step out of my comfort zone, try to put my best foot forward, approach it with enthusiasm and optimism. Like it's so grounded in just healthy thinking, healthy mindset. Like it's just unbelievable. He's got a good sense of himself. Which is weird because some actors get like, they like lose themselves or something. <laughs> Khalil Ramos opens, uh, open to work on a BL series with Thai actor Tay. Came out in 2020. New Capuso star Khalil Ramos shares that he would love to work with his friend esteemed Thai actor Tay in a BL or Boys Love series. Had the chance to work with Thai actor Tay last 2019 in the Japanese reality game show titled Find the Wasabi in Nagoya. Thanks to their time on the show, Khalil grew close to Tay and the two were able to forge a friendship that lasts even up to this day. Exclusive interview. And and that to, I saw it. Yeah, Stop. <laughs> what the heck was that? Why? Oh, God. Autoplay is just atrocious. Um, Tay is actually a very good friend. We've been keeping in touch after finding the Wasabi, which is a hilarious name for a show. A show we did in Japan. He actually speaks quite good English. We have a lot in common. He loves photography as well. He loves coffee, too. Give him the chance, he said he'd be open to it. Quote, that's going to be huge. I'd love to work with him. I know that he's kind of a prince of BL. If I ever given the chance, it'd be huge. Thailand-Philippines collaboration in a BL story. Definitely, I'm up for it. Hmm. Interesting. We all dreams of living the island life together with his future wife and kids. An island sounds good. Until you have to, like, get to and from, you know? What is the grocery situation like? Like, do people fly it in? Do you have to go in by helicopter or something? Like, it seems nice until you have to live it. So hopefully there's, like, a road or something. But even then, you have a commute. You definitely have a commute to the store. <laughs> That's instantly what I think of when I think of island life. Anyway, that is it, folks. That is the last reaction video of the day. We do have Friday coming up. Um, if, you'd like to, if you would like to request your own videos, you can do so, toddreacts.com. Season and series tiers is how you do so. Follow the Twitch channel if you're watching live right now. Go ahead and hit that follow button immediately. It was a journey indeed. <laughs> it's quite the journey. Um, there is one thing about this. This, uh, this show structure is the fact that you can pretty much guarantee there's going to be a bit of a ride on the roller coaster for sure. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. I appreciate it, each and every one of you that has done it. Um, check out the merch. Winter collections available right now, 15% on, for members, 15% off for members. Uh, ships worldwide, quality guaranteed, all that good stuff. Um, Am I forgetting anything? Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Shout out to the Discord crew. <laughs> and uh, shout out to the YouTube folks that uh, watch it later with timestamps and all that good stuff. Try to get this out as quickly as humanly possible. Hopefully nothing got blocked. I don't think it did. You know, nothing BBC related here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or start to your day i will see you on friday have a wonderful week i will talk to you in the discord the five o'clock geese are making noise evening is here oh gosh yes i hope you all have a wonderful week 
thank you everybody for joining shout out to uh the mods of course um yeah thank you see you on friday have a good week bye everybody <laughs>